Hey, what's up dudes? Kublikon here, and welcome to some Hearthstone. Specifically, I want to do some Arena. Now, I already have an Arena game on the process, as you can see, I'm doing okay. Um, so likely we're actually going to play, perhaps lose, perhaps win, whatnot. But I wanted to talk a little bit about Arena, because just the sort of the my philosophies related to it, and why I think it's actually one of the coolest things that Hearthstone has going for it. And also, I would say most importantly, yes, those are words. Most importantly, I want to talk about the actual logic that I'll have when I'm making certain moves. Uh, I am certainly an okay player in Arena. As you can see, one loss, or excuse me, one win and two losses, if only it was the other way around. And I want to share that, because I've, I'm an okay player in Arena. And I feel like whenever I'm watching some of these really good players who play Arena and talk about individual cards and things, they talk a lot about the value of this card and how special and great it is. And then another card, they're like, oh, it sucks. And there's a lot that doesn't necessarily feel like they've explained why that is. So I want to, right now, we'll just kind of walk through the thought processes. So first thing, very basic one. Arena is all about getting as many guys out as quickly as possible. So, in turn 1 and 2, we won't be able to play anybody. We might, because a card will come in. So we probably don't want this. Probably don't want this. This is just a really good card, and I'll explain why in a second. I'm actually going to get rid of it for the moment, though, because I want to try to get as many 1 to 2 drops as possible. Fortunately, we got worse hand. Okay. So... The reason why you want to play creatures in Arena is because it's since you're picking from three random cards, you can't really expect for sure that you're going to be able to have an Assassinate, like I do, an Eviscerate, or let's say I had, uh, I was a priest and I had a Holy Nova. The likeliness that I'm actually going to, nice, get cards like that well played. is, I meant to say greetings. The likeliness that you actually get cards like that are kind of a bit lower. Because these cards, you might get one and you might get two at best. But these cards that are typically used for clearing lots of minions are now a rarity compared to just getting more minions. So, the idea here is that basically you can't rely on a Holy Nova on turn five to save you. That's the point I'm going for. Now, I could eviscerate this guy, but that's actually a really bad play. Uh, the best play would have been to play a two-drop mini. Specific, you know, something that was a 3-2 would have been the best. I didn't have really anything. I'm not going to use an eviscerate on that little guy when this knife is just as effective. But the reason why I would have played a 3-2 best is because then I would have been able to trade into that guy and then have a 3-2 out here and a 3-2 would have the opportunity unfortunately this is a really bad three way to use a 3-2 right now but it's what's happening well. the reason why I'm saying it's really bad the card is actually really good but it's because of that three cost for 3-2 there's costs you can get of two costs for 3-2 that battle cry is great because of another reason get into it for a second <laughs> it's time for a little blood. so let's go back to that statement I said about getting minions on the board this is a really good minion for the sake that it's a 5-5 five, five for 4 you're getting more board presence is the term having this extra board presence allows you to better fight off whatever they put on the board because remember you can you can assume that they likely don't have something like this assassinate here or something like a Holy Nova if they're a priest. As a warrior, we that would be a brawl. You know, you can assume they probably don't have it, so this warrior will have a very Don't difficult time like removing large numbers of creatures. And that idea is pretty similar for everyone in the arena. So the best way to get ahead is to play as many That's a resting one, is play as many creatures onto the field as you can get. Now that goes in two directions. So I would play this guy, but it comes with this negative effect, which I don't want to deal with right now. So I'm going to play these two. 
comes with the problem of the fact that if this guy dies, which he likely can at some point, um, he's gonna summon one of these guys back. That's Here his disadvantage. I'm actually gonna go face right now because I don't really know anybody who I can ping. Now, let's go back to that statement about people on the board. Because you can't necessarily sweep dudes out, more dudes on board gives you two abilities. Option to do damage to the face, and second is the option to remove opponents. So you could have somebody, let's take this, he was a 5-5 at one, right? Please take that one. Of course it takes the better one. Crap. Um, so let's say we had, ooh, here we go. This is pretty nice. We can actually use this on this and then have him kill there and then be able to sit in. But I'm actually gonna do it. Hmm. So I could use this card to kill this, this card comboing to four to kill this, and then I can play this guy. It's a good play, and then I can hold on to this guy who is just a. I think that's the right play to obtain board control. Is the the big word in the group. Now we're gonna keep that guy hidden away because he's kind of a a two spell, like a free ping. Um, and so I'm finally I'm trying to get to this point, which is that you want board control because it allows you to remove what your opponent has to do any damage to you, since you can't trust spells necessarily to do it. And you want to have this basically this swing of what they use. The term is typically tempo, where it's like you want to get more stuff on board. See, this is an example of him trying to clear this. Yes, he, he just used five life points to do that, or five armor points, but it was worth it because he gets rid of something that would have had a massive effect tempo-wise. Now we can get this out. We're gonna play here. Kind of an ex it's a bad card, unless you have a lot of higher up stuff. I, I regret making this decision because I thought I might collect some higher up stuff and then it may, you know, a nine drop turns into a five drop, which is really cool. Same thing. You know, actually I'm gonna go attack with this guy. He's a low value target compared to some of these other options. So I don't ex exactly expect him to use a spell that uh, would target it specifically, like a, an, or a weapon, like an ax. Ooh. This is a bit of a, a rough part. However, we are actually in a very good position to fight him. And that's because we can remove this with an eviscerate. And then we can remove this with herself. And everything goes to face. Cool, we're actually in a very good position to win this game. So, this is a, you know, I've kind of been going through the general uh, reasoning and thought processes the theories behind why certain things are done, but I haven't yet ex exactly explained what was going on. So, we're going to win this match. Clear, he just, he didn't manage to knock these guys out. So, now as we're completing the match, well played. Cool. I wanna do a little, I'm gonna kind of take a step back because I was just getting into the example of tempo and why you wanna get more characters on the board. We're gonna talk it through now on this next one because now i kind of give you the general like more characters better thing to do um also the idea that it's better to get board control that's the that's the major thing of arena so all your cards that you're playing you're trying to just get more of them out and get your opponent use it to have less of them typically it's because you and it also the big thing is you just can't expect that your opponent will have an, an like an assassinate like I had or like a sweeper. So here we go. We got two poison guys, which is actually pretty cool. And the reason why it's cool is because it will allow us to trade up. Basically, if anything is bigger than any of these guys, we can trade. You know, like let's say this guy puts out, um, you know, a, a an actual one that could drop now is like a zombie chow, like a, a two three. This guy could kill that because of that poison. And that thought process is really good all the time to try to think about how you can have a cheaper card trade up to a more expensive card. Because more expensive cards are more valuable. So if you can constantly do that trade, you can expect that you will have always a better option in the long run. So, oh, that's great. So we're gonna use this here. 
removes this. Play this guy. This actually doesn't necessarily need higher attack because no matter what it hits, it will kill because it's a pit snake with the poison effect on it. But because we can hit him in face like that, that's cool. So, this card is actually pretty sweet because it will always kill whatever comes out from the opponent's side. Always will kill it. If it's a two drop, it can kill it. If it's And also, if you play it late game, it has the opportunity to kill even larger things too. And it forces our opponent to have to use like a weapon to go after it, which we are gonna use this combo right now. We got this character increasing. We now have a better wolf, a 3-3. Three, three. And we have this, you know, he has three damage and a weapon. That's some good tempo. But by creating this guy, this guy is now gonna take the entire board to kill. But then it only, le it leaves this guy alone. So he has to deal with this. So now he has to find a way to reverse the fact that we have taken more He's of the board. This is a good way to do that. By doing this one damage, it allows him to remove these guys and then take the rest of the board by attacking this guy in the face and using this little dude to remove him. Thus, gaining him board control. You could look at this and think about how this kind of sucks in a way for him because he's had to use so many life points. And that's true, but you, ha you it's important to keep in mind that whenever you play any of these cards, okay, this is probably a noble sacrifice. But you wanna keep in mind whenever you play these cards that having board control means that he can remove anything new I put on the board. So because he has that capability, it's okay to be losing health because at one point I am losing the ability to do damage back. Um, this is kind of an unfortunate situation, but I think this is the right play because we can use this guy to kill this guy. That's good. This is, this is scary. We will, if we were doing a back and forth, I'm more likely to win. Ready, sir. So, just looking at the board, he's winning. He has, you know, 10 damage, 11 damage on board. Um, unfortunately, this is very costly for me. Uh, we're gonna assume that he has a noble yeah. sacrifice or an avenge. So we're gonna just attack face. He likely has an avenge right now. So we're gonna attack face again. The reason why I'm doing this is in the same way that he was using his weapon to remove board stuff, this is allowing me to take away his life points by investing my life points. I will lose more life points, but if I killed something, he would get an avenge, which would increase the damage of something else, which I don't yet have the capability to react to. So that's a problem. But now as he's putting more damage in, he's, he's trying to gain more board control, I can now sort of respond with that. First thing that we're gonna do is we're actually going to, Here let's see, unfortunately go. this all costs a lot. So we're gonna, if I kill this guy though, he's gonna get his avenge, but then I can use this guy to try to um, hopefully kill whatever gets the avenge. That's my thought process. That got the avenge, which kind of sucks because now that's higher, but we got a trick we can do. Play this guy, cheap card. This is why this is so good. This allows a swing uh, this guy's for very little extra cost. I'm able to kill oh, off this big guy, also take away the fact that he had an avenge, and replace it with all this stuff. Ooh, this is an interesting question. This is nice because it's it's a sweep, so and you can rarely expect a sweep, but I think a spider tank's the better option, or the arcane golem because that will do explosive damage. This will last longer, we're gonna go with explosive damage. Job done. Couple reasons. In this case, I can remove something here. I mean, this is enough to remove these guys. Yes, it will give him a mana crystal, but in Arena, you don't really have a lot of ability to react, right? Like, so because that there's a lack of potential reactions, it's harder to have a successful play. Also, we have technically, because this gives a minion plus two attack in this, we can do six damage next turn and clear, like if we can get four damage somehow, we might be able to win. We won't have enough mana and whatever the ideas that come to mind, but we could potentially win that. What it looks like to me that the right play is gonna be, will be this. Heal both of us. 
this guy. This is a low chance of actually hitting us, because um, it's a 50% chance of making that mistake. Killing this, unfortunately, might just put something else here that's a danger. Um, I would really dislike killing this, because... I could just punch it with something, but I think this is actually the best one to go after. Um, probably, yeah, I think that one's the best one to go after. So on board he has 8, 10, 12, 13 damage. Assuming this goes after the right thing, of course. Um, we're kind of screwed here. To be honest enjoy because he has he had the earlier board control but remember how he, he had lost so many life points earlier but we weren't able to swing back once he started gaining control oh uh, we lost <laughs> this guy just had to hit our face for us to lose um wait or no 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 we, we're at 13 we're at 13 that's right um, however, I don't have any knowledge of a card that's going to be able to remove this many things. Well played. Well played. Thank you. We couldn't get the board control back, and so he was able to eventually fill up the board with things as we slowly lost them. Um, I made the comment about how we had that ability to use the guy to have the tempo swing the ability to cause that um, the SIS-7 agent was able to cause a character to die as he was placed. That is really valuable in the arena uh, because it is able to make it so that they cannot respond as easily because creatures are the best thing to use to respond. Now, as we're hitting this point, this is a, uh, you know, we're... Oh, cool. I got a... You, sometimes you get a card. that This is actually a pretty sick one because this is like 20 dust. And that's basically half a pack if you already own the pack. And then I got an actual uh, thing. So we're going to take... Uh, we're not going to open that pack yet. Uh, we might at the end. But I actually want to walk through a draft as well. Here we go. This is the first thing. You want to affect the board directly if you can. Now, Furion affects the board directly. Jaina affects the board directly with their hero powers. Thrall does not. So out of everybody, Jaina would be the best one to choose because she's able to affect the board without actually getting involved. Now, second thing. We talked about putting creatures down. Having a really good curve, so a lot of lower drops and not necessarily a lot of higher drops is actually the one of the best strategies to win. I really like Young Priestess because whenever you play her, Whatever gets played after her can get a little boost, which could be massive in a tempo swing. Sunwalker is, however, a sweet card where you have to do two things to it to really get through it. That's a great area. So there's a real value to this card as well. But you also want to make sure that you've great one low drops too. I'm going to take this low drop because it's really important right now. Here's another really interesting thing. Um... Would you take Wisps or an Ice Lance? This is able to stop an enemy character, but this is actually, like, imagine turn one, dropping this Mur Murloc Tiny Fin with a Young Priestess. You can actually get a 1-2 suddenly. Spiteful Smith is, in fact, a very good card because of this high 6 here. When you're looking at mana costs, you want to see something that is equal to the mana costs. If it's a little better, that's pretty cool, okay? However... These two cards are actually kind of not as good for a way because this can't really trade up. This could deal with a Murloc Tinyfin or a Young Priestess, but if I was to play something uh, that had 4 th had four 3 damage, or more likely is like a Spiteful Smith, if I had played a 2 drop on second turn and a 2 drop on the third turn, and then I coin out Spiteful Smith on my fourth turn kind of thing, those two guys could remove this. Heart almost would not be able to because that's such high level, but that's an important part to keep in mind why these are good. Wow. Um, this is kind of cool because, hey, we get a, uh, we can do it. That sw tempo swing. Clearly, though, Yazira is the best option here. Now, remember when I talked about that cost thing? See how this guy's a four and then it's a three, three? Well, it's not as good. You know, you could technically get a four, three, or you could get you know, a 4-5, like a Yeti, or a 5-4, like a Tomb Raider. But Tomb Raider, I think, is that what they're called? Yeah, whatever. Um, so it's not that good, in a way. 
but it has that divine shield that gives them that double hit. It's, however, dwarfed in awesomeness by this guy. Yep, slightly better stats, but significantly worse cost. But that Inspire is amazing. Remember how Sun Fury Protector was actually pretty good? Because she was able to make other characters stronger? This is great for tempo because suddenly we will have the Murloc be a 2-2, two, two, the Young Priestess a 3-2. And this sudden switch on the board where the opponent didn't see that happening is really nice. Typically you want to play this guy in turn 7 so that he's able to give everybody that cool additional boost of damage. Uh, because the thought process is that you don't want to play it and then don't get a chance to play its Inspire. If you could, you know, you kind of want to do it. Dragon's Breath, kind of cool because it allows you to do a cool kill after you kill people off the board. I actually am kind of partial to Mirror Image because it just seems like a smart, safe play. But Arcane Missiles is good too because it will quickly remove an opponent's uh, things early game. But I like the idea of this because this has a late game potential much more than Arcane Missiles. May not be the right choice, but it's the choice I'm making. War Golem 777 is kind of a fair thing. Reckless Rocketeer is actually pretty good too because it's basically a 5 cost spell for 6. It allows you to do some good removal. I would like, however, to have the War Golem because how I play personally, I, I prefer that. We already kind of have some protection taunt wise coming in, so I would rather some more lower drops because I want to be able to take control of the board early. Sorcerer's Apprentice, same idea. Now, run, wobbling runs, I've always had a hard time deciding if I like them. Uh, it's the high, the high health is really nice, uh, but the low here is more like you're trying to kill it so you can get this, you know, sweet card from it, or these, you know, three two twos because that's six damage, right? Like that's a pretty sweet trade. It's, but it, it never really felt like a, I've never been able to really get it to work. Um, Effigy, on the other hand, I uh, find it to be really nice because it allows you to maintain tempo on the board. And that's great. Raging Worgen's a similar situation because you attack him into something and because he has that Wind Fury, he actually gains Wind Fury after the attack. Here's another Water Elemental. So we were talking about that thing with uh, the, the stats, right? We want to see like four and four. Well, technically, uh, it, this goes up to nine, right? So you could have this be a four and this be a five or something. But the, what makes Water Ele Elemental nice is that because it can freeze something, it can stop something in its tracks. And since it has such high health, it takes really big cards to be able to do anything to stop it. So also it's super cheap. So you're not gonna really find anything that has six damage or until like turn six itself. So I find that to be really nice card to play because of the ability to get that extra hit in. Also because it freezes stuff. So you can really, you can hit something and then you can trade with other things because you've got that tempo where you basically pause a card for a turn lord of the arena is powerful but because of that five it's kind of a bad taunt it actually is kind of it has less health than the water elemental so i could run a three drop you know like a sorcerer's apprentice and a uh possibly a leveled up gadgets in but a young priestess and kill it iron forge rifleman's kind of bad too um it's, it's this three to two thing i mean remember how the combo card si7 agent was able to do two damage for this but it does allow a ping and a switch so that's pretty useful frostbolt good general card to kill things off quickly card draw is nice too puddle stomper we're actually doing okay and everything so i would like some card draw because i haven't had that yet flame juggler better than iron forge sure it's random but they got better stats that's a big one better stats better cost it's it just makes sense kind of thing taking the second water elemental absolutely this is just generally a good card because of that three damage right there, but we don't have any, you know, we have this dragon, but I'm not going to, you know, that synergy is possible, but I'm not going to trust it necessarily. I would rather this guy because I can play him on turn three and he basically becomes this, right? Because he just hides in stealth and then can spring out and attack somebody. Here's a couple, this is a couple interesting ones. Um, if you have mechs, get the gorilla bot. Discover is incredible. Wonderful mechanic. Do which one do we do here? Like this gives us a three drop spell that it turns into a six drop or like a six kill later. But this is just an immediate six. I think I'm gonna take the fireball because it's more consistent. We can expect what's gonna happen from it. No secrets. Expensive three three, not worth it. No secrets, but you know, it's an okay one drop. 
This is an actually a run-of-the-mill three drop. It's fine, but it has a really beneficial battle cry. Very worthwhile to take. So I would talk about this guy as a great option if we had more mechs, but we don't really have any mechs. Dragon Egg is actually kind of cool with a mage because you can ping it and make dudes come out. And if you have like a, a manage to get a hold of a Argus or something, which is a guy who gives taunts to people, this could be incredible because it constantly creates more dudes. This is, however, the best option because of that tempo swing potential. If they have a board of a bunch of dudes on it, I have a, not a bunch of dudes, that gives me a sweet benefit. Flame Waker is a very similar situation to that because he's able to kill off guys on boards, plus he has good stats that goes with him. Stable Portal is just kind of like a, eh, we'll hope for the best card. I actually want to have a Blizzard because it's a sweep, a consistent sweep, and I consider that safe. I've had a hard time choosing how to pick this card. Because it's death rattle is incredible, that plus three plus three is massive, I really like it. However, I've had a really hard time because I would play this card after I play it, another card, and then does it get to attack, and so you want to play it early, but then you don't really get good board control. I still prefer Jungle Panther over it. Okay, I really like Dire Wolf Alpha because it, the adjacent minions thing, it's a great thing to play after your one drops. Gnomish uh, is actually pretty good, but I no, it doesn't always fit with me. I really like Murloc Tidehunter because this basically gives you an ability to trade up and maintain the board because most people are going to drop a 3-2 on turn 2. Sometimes if it's a 2-3, you can still hit it. Um, but since it's a turn 2 one, it's basically a 3-2 but two options. So it's, it's kind of like, eh. Versus this guy, I feel like is a much better option because it will make opponents afraid to use spells. Okay, this is actually an amazing card because it's basically a free ping sometimes. But Ethereal Conjure, that discover mechanic, too good to mess up. I think this is actually the Draconid Crusher will be the best option because it's big, 6-6, six, six, fits. This is basically a heal, which is really cool. But this is basically a card draw from what you want to get. I personally like this better than this, but this can save your bacon. However, there's not a lot of situations where you necessarily will be able to come back and win with this because you need a sweeper to do it. Versus Duplicate can just help push you ahead. Good card, good card, better to take another fireball. This guy is actually pretty good for his, uh, you know, he's kind of a high uh, cost, but he has got really high health. I never talk about Magma Rager because it's such a low health card that you can have something very small trade it. Like, think the mage, ping it off immediately. Um, and even other cards that, you know, would have to hit the card to actually do damage, it's worth removing it because it can trade up so big, you might as well just get rid of it. And so, But because it dies so quickly, it doesn't really give you board control. I'm going to take another Jungle Panther. We're going to have a lot of sneaky Jungle Panthers here. And uh, I guess I'm going to take this guy. Because really, out of everybody, like I said, I don't really know how to play the runts. And I'm cool with the Arcane Golem. So, or the this individual. So, that's kind of just a walkthrough. We can do some more videos on this arena. Um, actually, I think that sounds like a great idea. So I think I'll go ahead and continue on with the arena. I'll continue filming, but we'll stop the video here for now. Thank you so much for watching. It was a total joy to have you. If you liked what you saw, please leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And of course, if you have any questions, please ask away, chat. I am truly a arena okay-ish, but I felt like while watching, I didn't see a lot of people providing advice for the very bottom okay-ish kind of area where it was just like here's the best card ever but it you know it's like why is that the best card ever it's like well let's talk through some basic stuff anyway thank you dudes for watching it was a total joy to have you here may the ground rise to meet your feet may the wind always be at your back and may the sunshine warmly on your sexy sexy face dudes see you later bye